decided in Christ's congregation of the evangelical Lutheran Church in America that welcomes and advocates for all of God's children, actively works for racial and economic justice, and honors the full spectrum of gender and sexual orientation, gender identification, and expression. The last page of the bulletin has a communication form on it. That's the way to tell us who you are and what you want us to know about you. Everyone is welcome to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion today. You don't need to be a member of this church or of any church. If you're here in the sanctuary, you have the choice of staying in your pew to receive communion or coming forward to the altar rail. If you want to stay in your place, you need one of the little paper bags that contains the bread and wine or bread and juice that you will receive. If you're going to come forward for communion, make sure you stop at one of these two little tables to grab the communion elements that you will receive. Is it true that church council is meeting tomorrow night? Oh boy, church council is meeting tomorrow night, everyone. <laughs> what an opportunity. <laughs> Every Wednesday at 9 o'clock, members of the congregation gather for breakfast at the Copper Kitchen of Central Avenue and 56th Street South. Anybody welcome to join us at 9 a.m. Our Thursday afternoon Bible study is going to take a short Christmas break for the mental health of the pastor. <laughs> but this Thursday at 6.30, we will have the last of our gatherings in the fellowship hall for Advent worship, Bible study, and conversation about life in the modern city of Bethlehem. Everyone should bring the food or beverage item that can be shared with others. That's Thursday at 6.30. Anybody have plans for Friday evening? <laughs> On Friday, we're going to be celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here, beginning at 5.30 with a concert of sacred music performed by Piano of Voices, Harp, and Bell Choir. Did I forget your name? Worship is then at 6 p.m. on Friday. We're hoping for a crowd, so masks will be required at that service, and we will all stay in our seats for communion at that service. After worship, you can then stay on for a Christmas reception up in our spacious third floor fellowship hall. And our celebration of Christmas will continue next Sunday with a traditional service of lessons and carols. And you are invited to wear your Christmas sweaters. <laughs> Whether or not they're ugly is up to you. Christmas sweaters, Christmas shirts, Christmas outfits, Christmas pajamas, whatever you want to wear to church next Sunday to celebrate Christmas. Please do so. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. We don't pass an offering plate anymore, but during the offering hymn, that's when you can use your smartphone and our QR code to make a contribution on our website. Or you can write out the check that you will put in an offering plate as you are giving. There are also envelopes there that you can use to make a tax contribution to our ministry. The beautiful altar flowers have been donated in honor of the birth of one Robert Schneider. Happy birthday. This week we are also celebrating the birthdays of Susan Amon and Gretchen Frederick. Is anybody else celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week, you poor Christmas babies? <laughs> My son's birthday is December 27th. What's his name? Emmanuel. All right. We will celebrate all these birthdays for right now. <laughs>
as it is easy for you to do so, as you are able to do so, I agree with the stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who does wonders for the poor, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, we confess our sins to you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our fault and in your creation. We mind our sense of self in material things. We forget that we are your children and we turn away from love. Forgive us and assure us again of your grace. God in Christ looks with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High and inheritors of the eternal promises. God strengthens you anew to follow the ways of peace. Amen. <laughs> Human body. 
We have two readings from the Gospel of Luke, the first of which is Mary's song, praising the power of God in unexpected places. John the Baptist makes his third appearance, albeit only in a small cameo role, in a scene in which two women discuss what God is doing within their bodies and what effect that will have on the rest of the world. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Blessed are you. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed is she who believes. And although our Bible translation goeth fudgeth a bit, in her song, everything that Mary says about God is in the past tense. You showed strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. You filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Does it matter? I don't know. It suggests that by the time Mary has gotten to the home of Elizabeth, she is already pregnant with her child. More interestingly, Mary speaks of what will be accomplished by the birth of her child as if it's already happened. But the really astonishing thing about today's gospel isn't its grammar or its vocabulary. It's that in our overly male-dominated sacred scriptures, we find a story in which two women talk about the inner workings of their bodies. <laughs> in a culture that only valued women for their ability to bear children, a girl who has only just come to the age when that is possible, and a woman who is long past the age when that is possible, are both pregnant. And they have the wisdom to interpret the bodily experience of pregnancy as a sign that God is turning the world upside down. Elizabeth has probably endured decades of scorn from her neighbors. Mary is about to endure months of it for herself. But just as women shamed by their communities can be honored by God, the hungry can be fed, and the rich turned away empty. The powerful can be cast down, while the lowly are lifted up. Throughout the Bible, God has this habit of accomplishing amazing things in unexpected ways. The prophet Micah offers his people a surprising alternative to the corruption and wealth of the city of Jerusalem, he says that a king will be born in the little town of Bethlehem. The rest of his prophecy is a bit more cryptic. Until she who is in labor probably doesn't refer to a specific woman, it could be the labor pains of a new creation being born in the midst of tragedy and heartbreak, if it is God who is giving them up, it may only be in the sense that anyone who is in labor has no choice but to surrender to the process. <laughs> Micah doesn't call Bethlehem the city of David. In fact, he makes no mention of King David. Of course, he wrote his words hundreds of years after David had died. People may have even forgotten that their most famous king was born in an insignificant village. I mean, in the first century AD, when some foreign astronomers, you know this story, were searching for a newborn king of the Jews, they went straight to Jerusalem to find him, because that's where kings are supposed to be. But King Herod didn't have any new children, so he had his people search for clues in the ancient scriptures, and when somebody came across these obscure words about Bethlehem, well, that just set off a whole series of tragic events. But Micah didn't know any of that when he wrote these words. He was just recognizing God's habit of doing great things through the humble and the lowly, the ignored and the insignificant. Whether that be in a town like Bethlehem, or within the body of a woman. Because she has been overshadowed by the divine, Mary carries God in her womb. 
This is how God prepares the body with which God will live and love and serve and die. The letter to the Hebrew says that Christ came into the world quoting verses from one of the Old Testament Psalms. Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. Now, the original meaning of the psalm is that although God doesn't require them, the author delights in offering sacrifices as an expression of their gratitude. The author of Hebrews interprets the psalm in a very different way. It's kind of unfortunate that the letter says that Jesus abolishes the ancient sacrifices. I have a memory of Jesus saying that he didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. The rituals of the ancient Jewish religion had prepared people for what God was always going to do in Christ. The sacrificial system of the ancient Jewish religion foreshadowed what God would accomplish by taking on human flesh and then sacrificing that flesh. The death of Jesus made all animal sacrifices complete by presenting the reality of God's love towards which they were just pointing. It is God's will that all of creation will be saved and renewed by the death of Jesus. Not because God condemns Jesus to the cross, but because the God of self-sacrificing love voluntarily goes to the cross. God is in a human body so that God's self-sacrificing love can be embodied. And not just by Jesus, but by us as well. It is God within us who empowers us to die to ourselves and bring some light to others. We embody the God who turns the world upside down not with violent actions, but with our nonviolent and self-sacrificing attitudes and values. Blessed are we who trust in God's promises, and blessed is the fruit of our lives that we offer to the world. Just as God prepared a body for God's own self, God has prepared a body for each one of us, tall or short, strong or weak, bleeding or weeping, we are painstakingly crafted in the image of Almighty God. Lord knows we may not have the body that we would have chosen. It may have too much pain or too much fragility for us to even see its worth. But it is the body through which God has chosen to do more miraculous things in the world.
God. He fell from my tree with great pain. I watched the dew the same. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful, O God, you stir up the hearts of your people. We give you thanks for those who embody your love to us. Give us courage to follow that example. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Find ways to share signs of that peace with one another with all the people who so desperately need peace. Let us give thanks. 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one body by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A feast of love is offered here. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You go ahead and be seated. Will the ushers tell you to come forward? Those of you who are staying in your seats can uncover the bread that you have. It is the body of Christ given for you. And you can uncover the wine or juice. It is the blood of Christ shed for you.
gathering up your stuff. Please do dance your way over to the fellowship hall, though. I know there are special things there in honor of birthdays. It's also a good time to get to know people and get reconnected with people. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks. Peace to God. Thank you.